If you're brave enough to stand up about Beauvais, you get called a conspiracy theorist and you get called out for being anti-science. I'm doing what the, a lot of the loudest defenders of Beauvais are not doing. I'm gonna walk you through the official safety studies, what's happening in real farms, including on the continent in places like Denmark, the trials that have been paused and what the NFU actually says about Beauvais. Then I'll explain, even if Beauvais works perfectly with no problems, why we just don't actually need it. So whatever happens, Beauvais getting debunked today. If you're new here, I'm Ben. I'm a British working farmer fighting for consumers and to try and reveal the truth in farming and the food chain because it drives me mad. I hate that we're being lied to, so I make these videos. I'm gonna start with the biggest case of pro Beauvais, people that want it. So the European Food Safety Authority took a look at Beauvais in 2021. They came to the conclusion that there was no adverse effects on dairy cattle. This was based on 100 milligrams per kilos of feed. Three dash NOP is the chemical makeup of Beauvais, if you like. According to this study, breaks down quickly and leaves no residues in the milk or the meat. That's the official line and I've linked it in the description for you to take a look at if you so wish. The UK Food Standards Agency did their own research in 2024. They looked at over 58 different studies and they concluded that Beauvais was safe and safe at twice the recommended dose. Their modelling suggests any potential bovar in the milk would be about one hundredth of what is deemed harmful. So now I don't know if that means they think it is in the milk, but they're saying if it is, they don't believe it would be harmful. Link in the description. Another review in 2025 from UC Davis, again I'll put the link in the description, goes that the earlier trials were considered safe. This is based on controlled data and no clear safety signals. So the manufacturer, DSM Ferminate, uh, Ferminic, you know, this, you know what I'm like by now in my pronouncing. <laughs> they point to trials in multiple countries and they say they haven't seen any health risks. Then the fact checkers have piled in. Again, a lot of the studies say no detectable 3-NOP in the milk. So on paper, in controlled trials, it appears Bovet is safe. The scientific review and scientific opinion is that it's fine to feed to cattle so you can drink the milk or eat the meat. So, safe in theory, but in practice, is it safe? So let's look at what happened recently in Denmark. This is where Bovar left the laboratories and left the testing tables and actually hit the farms. From the 1st of October, 2025, Denmark made Bovair mandatory in dairy cattle in their mission to push down methane emissions. So that's about 1,400 dairy farms now in Denmark are using Bovair. And this is for 80 days of the year. And that's not a tiny hand-picked trial. That's a national rollout. Within six weeks, they had a crisis on their hands very sudden. By mid-November, more than 100 farmers had reported problems. Around 7% of those big farms. They had started reporting serious problems with the cows, and they believe it was after starting with Beauvais, because that's the only thing that changed. Some farmers even did more and spoke up about it. You might remember my video that I made, the farmers in Netherlands talking about Beauvais. So here's what they described after using Bovair. Cows with fever and diarrhea, reduced appetite, drops in milk yield, in some cases up to 20% drop in milk yield. That might be in turn due to lack of appetite. And here's a really big one, fertility and body condition. They had problems with this. So they weren't looking healthy and they weren't getting pregnant. Then there are some somatic cell counts, some real data here, which is a risk for mastitis, which is something that can cause real illness in any animal that feeds milk to their young. And in some of the worst cases, there's even been deaths reported. There's been reports of farms with 600 cow farms, starting with Beauvais, and they all reported issues since starting to use Beauvais within just days. And then when they stopped, the symptoms disappeared. Danish authorities didn't just shrug. Aarhus University, which I have spoken about before, and another organization, Seges Innovation, again, my pronunciation isn't very good. They are investigating this at the moment because they need to find what's going on. Everything points to it being safe apart from actually using it. Welfare exemptions were brought in so farmers were allowed to stop using Beauvais and that's how they knew the symptoms stopped. The manufacturer of Beauvais 
clearly denies this and refers back to all the safety and all the data and all the trials that they've done previously to try and back themselves up to say it's not causing these things. But it's very difficult when you see that cows have just started to be fed it in larger scale and there's been problems. Some people say it's been going on in Australia for a long time, why doesn't it affect that cattle? Because actually there's been no reports of any problems in Australia. But what I do know, different breeds could react to it differently and there is some suggestion that dairy cattle would react to it worse. That's just a little bit of data I found, I haven't got anything hard for that. So far the university research hasn't come up with a solution and hasn't got any concrete evidence to suggest that this is what's happening. They say it might even be linked to diet or stress. This could be true, I must stress. I don't want this to be looking like I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm giving you facts. But here's the key point. When over 100 farms were mandated to use it, they all suddenly reported very similar problems without any link to each other, apart from Beauvais. This isn't just one crazy farmer on Facebook or one nutter like me talking to a camera. This is a signal that we need to take this seriously and it needs more work because animal welfare is paramount. But it didn't stop at Denmark's borders. Norway also paused all Beauvais on the 12th of November. Their main milk company, Tyne, T-I-N-E, halted its own trials because it cited concerns over welfare. Sweden followed later in November, stopping trials as well, just like Norway. Again, off the back of what was seen in Denmark. They are taking it seriously. The evidence starts to make you think. Into the UK now. Arla, as we know, have been running trials using Beauvais. This was a trial on about 30 dairy farms, that's 3-0 in the UK. That trial ended on the 8th of November as planned. They reported a drop of 27% methane with no reported milk yields lost. So Arla seems to think their trial was a success. But that trial has been criticised for what it didn't show. Long-term health impacts like we've spoken about, fertility issues and animals going off their food. The real economics for farms, once you step outside laboratory conditions. When you see Denmark, Norway and Sweden all making exemptions for Beauvais because they're not convinced it's safe. So the grown-up question isn't, how can we make methane look on a graph? The grown-up question from these companies is, why are farmers and the public up in arms about this? We need to listen. So what about here in Britain? And I bring in the National Farmers Union, or the NFU for short. They have not given Beauvais their big rubber stamp of approval. Good for you, NFU. They've reportedly said any methane suppressing additive needs to work across all farms has to maintain a high standard of animal welfare and needs robust evidence before it is rolled out nationally. Or words to that effect. I'll put that link in the description. So in November 2025, the NFU want a scientific approach and proof that it actually works on real farms, doesn't create welfare problems, doesn't put unexpected costs onto farmers, and doesn't wreck consumer trust in milk and meat. That's a big one. So back in early 2025, the NFU was already warning about additives. They were pushing for integrated low-risk options, better genetics, better breeding, feed efficiency, the boring, sensible stuff we know works, trying to build up a quality herd to try to do the best you can. Doing it this way can make an impact without worrying about feed additives. So when I sit here, people calling me tinfoil hat guy or saying it's conspiracy nonsense, it's absolutely not. I am completely right to be suspicious about it. So are the NFU, so are Norway, so are Sweden, and so are Denmark. I can't be that daft. My opinion is, especially backed by the NFU, is that they don't think this is a conspiracy. And that's good enough for me. Now my final point. Even if everything I've said is incorrect, we don't need Beauvais. Beauvais is designed to reduce methane emissions in cattle. But that is a problem that doesn't exist. Now I make a lot of videos, but I have a friend who makes a much better video about this than me. And I'm going to insert that right now. The biggest lie in the world right now is that cows are killing the planet. At the core of that lie is how methane is calculated. And in the next few minutes, I am gonna take you through the full carbon cycle for my dairy cows from the air 
and back to the air. All the carbon that enters my dairy cows starts in the air and I have organized this fog as a nice visual representation of that carbon. Let's take 10 carbon atoms from the air and follow their journey through one of my dairy cows. The grass in my field uses photosynthesis. <laughs> That's a hard word to say. Photosynthesis. Grass uses photosynthesis to pull carbon out of the air and store it as energy in the form of carbohydrates and proteins. So when my cows come in here in a few weeks to graze this field, they will eat the grass and they will take up the carbon. Sorry if I'm explaining this like you're stupid, but none of the public question any of this stuff. One of the 10 carbon atoms will leave as meat and milk, which is then consumed as food by us humans and we emit the carbon as respiration. Another two of the carbon atoms are emitted as respiration by the cow, also not counted as an emission. The remaining seven carbon atoms are digested in the rumen of the cow by bacteria. The bacteria inside the cow's rumen takes the remaining seven carbon atoms and converts them to methane through the bacteria's version of respiration. So respiration from the human, not counted as an emission. Respiration from the cow, not counted as an emission. Respiration from the rumen, counted as an emission. But here's the thing, no matter how the carbon leaves the cow, it has all started in the same place, which is the air. This next bit is where climate scientists like to gaslight us farmers and say that methane is not the same as CO2. So let's continue to track our seven carbon atoms which have left our cow as methane. They have entered the atmosphere again and them seven methane atoms have 96 times the global warming potential of seven carbon atoms. However, over the next 12 years, them seven methane molecules that entered the atmosphere will break down into CO2 and water, completing our cycle. What this means is, if you have a stable number of animals, like this farm has for the last 12 years, as you emit the seven methane molecules, seven more that you emitted a decade earlier have just broken down back to carbon to be reabsorbed by the grass. So the net effect of the methane molecules emitted by my cows on global warming is zero. Factually, zero. And yet, in all the carbon calculations, them methane molecules are accounting for over 70% of my farm's emissions. So I hope you enjoyed that little, it's almost like getting back to school, isn't it? About the methane cycle. And this means as of the UK with a steady populace of cattle that we do, and this is actually maybe even declining head of cattle in the UK, that something like a dairy farm is already not contributing to methane climate change because of the cycle we've just watched. So bovair is not needed. It's got a capped benefit and an added cost to the farmer and consumer risk for something we probably just don't need anyway. Now I'm gonna get my conspiracy hat on and say what I always say at the end of the day, follow the money, let's see who gains from Beauvais and who doesn't. That is usually where the problem lies. So as a working farmer, the two big questions, is Beauvais safe, is it harmless, and does it work in real world trials? I'm not convinced. Even if I can be convinced that it all works and that it's fine, do we actually need to be putting it into millions of cows' diets to solve an emissions crisis not caused by cows? We are fixing the wrong part of the climate problem. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, come to my memberships. I do exclusive videos, I do exclusive content. I always try my best and, and you'll be supporting the food revolution that is Team Radmore. So join in the memberships. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and share this video. It helps more than you know. And I, I genuinely love every single one of you. So thank you so much. And I'll catch you on the next video.